back when I called you my baby I could never put you to shame But I'll be flying high Got my head in the sky With my ticket on gravy Uh, good day. I'm, I'm excited about this. Today we have Will Corbin at the Roman Anton Studios for Roman Anton Podcast. Welcome, Will. Thank you for having me, sir. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, it's, I, I try to collect my thoughts on Saturday and Sunday when we do these podcasts to try and figure out what the topics are. But, um, and I've, I've said this, this version to you a couple of times. And so it feels old and worn out maybe between you and I. I, I don't know you that well. We've only really talked two or three times. But uh, the first time I saw you play, I was so shocked because I had sort of been looking, trying to look around town for um, uh, music venues that I'm used to sort of wandering into in the States or elsewhere. And I walked into a, a show one night and you were playing uh, maybe on this uh, ukulele or maybe on something else, but you were playing a version that sounded like it had vocoder effects on your mic and you're playing your your ukulele and you're playing a version of funky town and, and yep <laughs> i think it was with other people so that may be years ago now i'm not sure um that was probably a year and some change ago god that recently it feels like a long time but i was so happy to see that and it, it was sort of a pivotal moment for me over here because sometimes in Asia I get worried about um, competing with local acts, um, offering things um, that may be not available or offering my own thing. I'll just put it that sure, way. So, sure. And sometimes I don't see, it's in particular when you're in Kaosan Road or places where there are thousands of super talented Thai musicians and you know the job they have to do is play covers. Yep. And and I walked in that and I was like, wow, this is a great spot. And this guy is is unique. And I was looking at you up on stage um, and I was very happy about that. So that's really since then and since I've seen you play and since I've seen you do your lips manly stuff and since I've seen you play with other people. And hopefully we'll talk about all those topics. Oh, yeah, sure. But um, that was really the reason why I re wanted to reach out to you and sort of had some email bromance with you to try and get you in here to talk. Uh, because I felt like it was such an important part of the Thailand Bangkok music scene, and so we're in Bangkok, Thailand. Roman and Pod podcast is uh, uh, in Thailand. It's uh, December of 2020. We're coming out of a hard season, um, and that's the setting of the stage. Maybe a year or two ago, uh, I saw you, and so I don't know if you have a response to that, but that really was. And when we talked about this when you came to the office a couple of weeks ago, um, but that's sort of what my thinking was at the time was it was a blast of originality and sort of uh, in a period of time where I was feeling somewhat isolated. Wow, uh, that's a serious intro, man. I, I appreciate every word of that, uh, and uh, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, you know, I, I love that song, uh, and I love doing that song that way. <laughs> right. I'm, you know, I've gotten, call me, get. I got whimsical, I got Broadway, like, I don't, I don't know what I got, but I just started doing things in this way uh -huh. and it felt exactly right and I try and do that with every song and when I take the okay for example that tune you know they start on the god and make a move to it right, right 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 and I'm like that's such an infectious spot I want to come back to it more so I I basically just took their song apart and just Frankensteined it to me yeah and, let, wait, uh, let me ask you about that. Hey, Frank, could you pause that so we're not watching me up on the screen or turn it off? Yeah. I don't know if you can click that, but right there, Frank. Uh, it, turn, turn this. Take that and turn the TV off. Yeah, Phillips. Thanks. You can even leave that in. I don't mind. Sorry. I'm sorry you had to watch me on TV. No, that's right. No. So, God, I'm trying to remember. There were two versions of that song in my life. One was the original. One was the hit, I think. I, so uh, who wrote this? I, it's Lips Inc. I don't know if they even wrote it, but I Lips think Manly. that's the. I th well, oh shit! I didn't even think about that. 
I didn't even think about that. That's, right. Uh, maybe that was subliminal. I don't even right. know. Right. Oh, that's but, awesome. Know, so just, let, let's catch short, up with that. So, uh, but the, the that the vocal parts, vocal cord, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I grabbed a, um, a TC Helicon. What I think it was about four years ago. I was back in the states, and I was getting a little bored with vanilla sound. Uh. And I was doing, I mean, I was hitting some great harmonies and stuff with the Scallywags, and we it was a lot of three part stuff. Mm. But I was just feeling sort of. I was hitting a ceiling with what I could do. Mm. And so I wanted to get some stuff, some toys. You know, I, I learned how to perform on a uke. And it was at... All right, let me back up. This yeah. is kind of a longer story, I suppose. Uh, okay, let me start at the beginning. I, I played tuba in, in elementary school, That's baritone, awesome. some valve trombone. Awesome. So I, I came from that band geek background, uh, which is... Yeah. Sheet music, you're all together. You wait for the guy who fucks up eight times. Mm. You fuck up eight times. Everybody mm. waits for you. It's it's a it's a tooth pull. Yeah. But the show, when you get to it, is good. But it's too long and slow of a payout. I never got the excitement of being on a stage mm. in a in a performance until I was doing it in a more visceral way. Uh -huh. So I but I had the technical understanding of sound and music and i had an ear to hear the note because as a tuba player you got to be on the note you, you mm. can't fuck that up you just uh. you're the it's like a bass player same thing uh. you just can't fuck up so you had to learn that in order to do okay there but then i struggled after high school to find anything to do i i went to piano and i could never get my left hand work down to the point where i could be doing this mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. i'd be you know mm -hmm. you know how it is I didn't quite get the left brain over that on a piano. It's, it's technical, man. I love watching piano players really good just because it's it's such a struggle for me over there. Uh. But um, so I gave up on that. I moved over to screwing around with guitar a bit. Couldn't quite get it right. But my dad, who's a music guy as well, and collects instruments from anywhere, had collected a uke. It wasn't this one. It was a Lonnie Kai. Uh. And I was like, let me take that. Let me screw with it. And I came back over here with it. Is the one thing I brought back. And there was a uke scene here that was just exploding. It was right around Miraz and, and Singto Nam Cho in Thailand. Was They were all doing this uke thing. Huh. There was a ukulele revival here. Okay. And I kind of was like, this is weird. These people are crazy about this thing. And I just got it. So I started going to these uke conventions. So my entry to performance <laughs> was through that. Uke. <laughs> I'm it's sorry you, for laughing. No, but the no, funny I, thing is, I, it is, I, I was like, this is so weirdly dumb and fun. Like, uh, I, yeah, I just, yeah, well, yeah. what are these, these people going crazy for this? It's some sort of anthropological, interesting thing to yeah. do. And a good buddy of mine was, had a you. He's like, let's go, man, let's go. So we go to these shows, and I guess we, me and him, and maybe a few other Westerners, but mostly Thai and mostly well into their own stuff. And I was just, conversing with different people trying sorry trying to get people to play with and do performances i was sloppy i i had never done it. i played to myself in rooms or whatever yeah. but so i learned how to perform here I, I it wasn't anything i had from back home okay and i i was naked because i was new to to how this was for me and it's only now i guess it was probably year five or so when i went six maybe when i went ah, i need i need a different sound Okay, now we're back up to that point. Yeah. And I picked up a, a TC Helicon in the U.S., which is real good. No, maybe that was here. I got this crappy little Zoom G1X, I think it's called, a $60 toy. Yeah. But for my uke, it's good. I know it sends a sound dude up a wall. They don't like it. It's yeah. cheap. But uh, it gives me everything I need. Yeah. So that's that's how I got it into doing that stuff. I, added, I could add Wawa to it. I could... I could add some tremolo to it. I could start building soundscapes in a much different way, uh, which led me to the whimsical side. All right, I'm going to stop because that was a big long time. No, that's good. Well, <laughs> I mean, there's, and there's a lot to pick up. And, you know, at some point I like to ask about where you're from and what we do. But, I mean, yeah. I, I introduced this by the way that I met you. And, and I think back to that song and it was, you know, it's obviously part it could be it could have been in the 70s or 80s or 90s when that came out. And then there was the other version. And maybe I'm wrong on both of those accounts, but it was such an interesting song and, and, um, and you played it. I mean, it just sounded great. And so here we are, we're in, in Thailand. Uh, and you just told me a couple of new facts that I didn't know. And so, yeah, sure. you, so, I mean, your, your harmonies and your singing are, are, are very solid. And so 
playing tuba and singing doesn't seem like you did that at the same time. No, so I did. But what I did was have... America is good for one thing still in my book, car rights. Okay. I had car rights, dog. Yeah, okay. Long car rights. Uh, yeah. And I had Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young mm. to listen to. I had Neil Young and his own to listen to. I had the Beatles to listen to. I had everything under the sun, you know, Motown and stuff on the top 40, Casey Kasem. You're writing from, you know, my, my extended family live in Florida. At the time, I'd say I was getting musically oriented. We were living in Virginia. And it was these 14-hour car rides with the whole family. We're just all trying to sing and, you know, listen to the song, singing along. Um, that's that's where it started. And then, of course, a teenage angst in high school, you take alone car rides and turn on your song uh, and, yeah. you know, do that. So I, I learned to sing in a closet, an auto closet. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so that's interesting. So you say Virginia was home when you were young? Uh, all right, we moved. The crust. Uh, Florida is now extended home, always oh, yeah. has been extended home. There's, there's been a familial return to Florida. Sure. Uh, my immediate family, we moved to San Diego. We're there for about, I guess, eight years, maybe seven. And then I spent mid and late teens in, in Virginia. Whereabouts? Uh, Newport News, Hampton, yeah, yeah. Yorktown, yeah, yeah. Colonial Peninsula. But Newport News had shipbuilding? Sure. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. shipbuilding place, yeah. big military area. In right. fact, when I say those three things, usually when I say Pensacola area, right. San Diego, and right. Virginia, most people go, oh, you're a military brat. Yeah. But no, my dad was a newspaper editor, so but he took jobs with Tribune Company in those places. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, um, the son of a writer or editor. Yeah. Um, so it, was there a writing thing to you? Uh, more, it, it does strike me. I have inspired moments of it, but mm. I, I'm not much of an erudite. Right. I, I'm much more of a, of a sit quietly and just, uh, I don't sit quietly. I'm, I'm a spaz, but uh. I don't, um, I'm not, clever in those ways uh, you know not on a not on a on a basis where i can make it a craft of of a yeah. hobby it's it's always a chore yeah and i get yeah. i'm not asking to pry i mean i'm asking to figure out if if uh you know we start talking about funky town and song and we get back to virginia and then pensacola and san diego yeah um it's a weird jump. Sorry. <laughs> right. No, 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 not at all i'm trying to say is there you know and then you mentioned your influences and so i'm saying uh, you know, I uh, as much as the Beatles um, in my childhood, and and then prog rock and some other musicians like Bowie, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, yes, were next, and then Hall and Oates. I mean, it was a very strange combination. Sure, I did have regional influences. Okay, and so you know, Sticks, Ario, Speedwagon, um, uh, Violent Femmes, a little bit later, and groups like that. And as I sit here and hear where you're from, and I try to identify who is from those areas. I'm struggling to say, um, oh, Newport News had big acts that were from that region, even D.C., if I included that. And then Florida, I'm like, hmm, I don't recall any big Florida acts coming out. And so yeah. did you, were you influenced locally or was it more? No, no, yeah. no. I, you know, maybe it's a generational thing. I'm, we're video game kids. None of that shit really meant anything. Yeah. And when I was listening to stuff on the radio, it was, <laughs> It was like, damn, that's a good song. I don't care. It's a good song. Yeah. And, and I, I wasn't a deep um, uh, digger. Yeah. I, I, got, I dug deep on certain things that really I liked, like uh, Steely Dan. Right. It's a band that I, I would call my dad sort of peripherally into it. I, I got a lot of my what I listened to from what he was listening to because he'd get the albums. Really? Or whatever. And I, I, I came at it not knowing anything much about Stephen, just like songs my dad was listening to. I think I'm way more into it than he ever probably was or is, maybe. So help me understand his being into it and what that meant. Did that oh, mean you know, my, in the car? Yeah, exactly. At my, home? Yeah, no, my dad's a musician, but but he, it wasn't ever, a, I, I don't recall ever seeing him sitting in, you know, Reading intently, um, liner notes, or yeah, something. something that I was the one as an ADD kid sitting there uh, looking yeah, yeah. at it. I, I don't, th I don't know, maybe he did it when I wasn't around. I was a little bratty, he probably did it when I wasn't around. I, I don't know. Did he write about music? Um, he writes mostly about just sort of 
life experiences, I suppose. I don't know that I've noticed him write analytically in a in a in an editorial sense about mm. music that I recall. Maybe a bit about um, some time he spent in Europe playing with a a, a local band there. Okay, but no. And, Katie lied versus King Charlemagne comparison. No, or no, 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 no. I don't. I don't think he gets that. But <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of where he is too. I. I don't even. I do, but I, I don't write. I don't. You know, write extended critique about it. I'll talk yeah. about it all day, but it's nothing I put on paper. You know. And so, what were the early influences? Were they vocal melody, all of the above? Uh, you know, uh, life feel. Uh, I, I. I don't know how, that to, makes how sense. to describe that it. You sense. know, just. Songs that would be the orchestration of whatever I was going through at the time and seemed to be the right sound, you know. I don't know. You go through Heartbreak or whatever, and you got Brick by Ben Folds Five on repeat for eighteen hours, you right, know. Right. Or, or you, you're listening to, uh, you know, The Music Man uh, by <laughs> Meredith Wilson. I don't know. Whatever's on my mood yeah. in the car, but I, I certainly developed my love and ear for music in a car. It's very clearly in a car. Yeah. You know, it's interesting the way you sort of cue that up because uh, I'm I'm in absolutely no position to claim musical pedigree of any type. And so I sit back and I, I think about the amount of time I spent being sort of righteous about my music selections. Like, sure, I like these, you don't, I'm better than you. Or whatever that was all about as a child or an adolescent, just sort of musical comparativeness. And sure. It's one of the things that I found with my nieces, you know, my brothers, daughters in particular, their willingness to onboard anything that they like musically. Yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah. I would reject stuff on premise alone <laughs> right? sometimes. Yeah, Which yeah. is so ridiculous looking back because when I've gone back to some of it now I'm like, wow, that was that was awesome. Why was I not listening to stuff like that? Okay, so I, I equally would do that and I, I pick a perfect example, Christian music. I I'm not I'm not a believer, man. It's just not it's Up not to in you. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, when I, when I would have heard that in my, I don't know, mid twenties, kind of you know, radical, you know, uh, fuck the system way, mm. I, I would have been like, nah, it's trash. I listen to Christian music. I'm not, I, I couldn't name you a name, right. but I've heard Christian music. That's, fuck, it's phenomenal, yeah. and it's inspired and it's good music. And so, <clears throat> on that same vein with what you're saying, I, I'm guilty of the same thing. But you learn to. To shut off that premise, I suppose. And I, I've learned to listen to a song purely for what it is, the health of that song. Yeah. And if I hear that, I, I don't care what else came with it. I, if it if it infects the song with what came near it, maybe. Yeah. But but typically I try to isolate the, the view. Well, and maybe I'm giving the world too much credit. I mean, I guess if I try to think about what generates the most advertising in the region we live in, in Thailand and in Asia... Um, you know the the K-pop or that 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 the band phenomenon where there's many people in it and they're young and they sing multiple parts. So I'm going to call that K-pop. I'm not sure if that's the right thing. And that seems to have taken this area by storm. And so consequently, I would doubt folks that I uh, with whom I share music preferences probably are not K-pop fans. So yeah. maybe nothing has really changed, and it's always the next generation of things. But with that said, this sheer accessibility of it. So if you like the version that's the hit, I'm sure there's a million different versions you can find online. So sure. maybe that's the new thing. Maybe it's resignedness and not openness. Maybe it's it is in our lives and you can't hide. It, I don't really like K-pop, but yeah. I I can understand what it does to people. I, I can understand the joy it gives someone. I, I, in fact, I watch it in my day job. I do virtual events, and I literally do the twice yeah, yeah. K-pop dance. Yeah, I don't know that one, but yeah. it, it, okay, you wouldn't. I didn't know it three weeks ago, but I've got that doing this, and yeah. people light up. I mean, they light up yeah, yeah, yeah. with the excitement of it. I didn't live through the '70s, yeah. but I bet the '50s and '40s cats were going, "Who are these wackos? Right, what, right, what's, right. what's going on with music?" It, it, it must be generational. Yeah. I, I can't see any way around it because I don't. I don't connect in the same way you don't with K-pop or things like that. But it, it, it's it's un. It's um. You have to identify what's occurring, the, the, yeah. what it's doing to the, the world. I guess yeah. I don't know if I don't identify. You know, because yeah. the the studio we record at, can Frank Frank and I and Shogo go in there, and Can always has something that he's mixing for someone, and so we've listened to some of his K-pop yeah. productions, and they're astounding. In yeah, the yeah, yeah. Thirty-two tracks of 
vocal. I, mean, the, I was like, what? And the production and the, and the talent is is fantastic. <laughs> I guess it's the is is contrivity a word? Yeah, I don't know. Is it even a word? I, I, get, I know my, what my you're trying father, to say. The so my father's getting this. Is going, it's not a fucking word. Yeah, 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 yeah. contrivity. Yeah. I think uh, we fucking let's name this word. session contrivity it's by Will Corbin. I've, I've just invented a word. <laughs> the contrivity of it is probably what what throws you off. The the let me assemble these people yeah. for, and then you make something after the fact. Well, this gets back to something you've already introduced as a concept. You know, I was, I was wondering in the back of my head as you're saying this, should I be critical of, of Will for not wanting to learn the harder instrument? And I thought, no, I mean, you, you don't know what's going on in his head. He didn't want to play the piano. It just wasn't suited for him. You're a super mobile guy up on stage. You don't hold in place. And I'm thinking, you know, Piano is sort of limiting unless you strap one on. You know, like Bro, first and foremost, like in life, I'm unabashedly lazy. I'm just lazy. I, I, okay. I, don't, I don't have fucking time. I'm sorry. I don't have. I don't have the guy. Guys, you hear these people that sweat in corners and and just bleed their fingers dry to get it right. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Mostly video games shit my heart out on a stage yeah. in a moment acutely. I I go up and I. I do my thing and it's a, it's flowing out of me. Uh, and then I, I just get lazy again. I don't, I practice sometimes when I'm like, Oh shit, I got to get this right. But, uh, but I don't, I don't live and breathe it uh, in, in every moment of my day. Uh, you know? I'm lazy. And that's why, that's why I'm still here, man. Well, it ain't that. Yeah, but, but I also love this. I, I love how uh, comfortable it feels. Uh, and it's, it's just, it's like a teddy bear. I don't know what to tell you. Well, and I think that's what I saw the first night I saw you. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to drag this back. There's no order to this podcast. Oh, no, sure. so I, I think I've told you. you Go know, anywhere you want, man. Well, yeah, Roman on time podcast. We do interview and then hopefully you'll play for us and then we'll go somewhere in Bangkok because I hope people who dial into this um, can tap into the scene that you and I take for granted now, which is we get to walk on and go places. And this morning we yes, probably saw true. some crazy stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I, I went and played tennis on grass this morning. It's just all, it's all awesome for me. And it's just all upside. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'd like, you know, I guess part of my literary upbringing or I, I wasn't brought up literary, the stuff that I read growing up. Um, I always liked the wandering man, the traveling man. You yeah, know? And yeah. So sure. reporting back home or to the world about travels and throwing in some Thai stuff seems important to me for this, this podcast. And so, We'll stop somewhere that you you mentioned that you like, um, but I, I guess just to sort of tie all this together, um, you know, it, it did fall into place when I saw it, and I thought, okay, that makes sense. And you and I were talking earlier about a local musician called Yaman that we oh, both yeah. appreciate, yeah, know, just sure. like it does for him. You see him, and you're like, okay, I get this. Yeah, and he's practiced innumerable hours. I imagine we can't oh, even imagine. Oh, I, I, I see. I see guys like Yaman, and I'm just like, yeah, you, you got it already, bro. Right, I, right. I don't strive for that because he's, I, I fucking love watching it. Yeah, he's good. But I, I would never go to myself, I suppose. I got to get there. I, yeah. It's just like, Grace, I just want to watch you more. Yeah. I just want to watch you do that more. And you inspire me to do what I do in my way more. I, I, I love seeing someone else be so comfortable in what yeah. they do and what they're saying. And he's he's just a, like I said before he's a common man. Uh -huh. he, it's not and it's not just what he says and what he sings. It's what and what he plays. It's what he wears. It's the way he walks. It's the way he talks. Yeah. It's, it's everything. Well, so instead of doing an ad for someone else, let's maybe talk. Because <laughs> um, hopefully one day I'll get to talk to him on the show. But um, so let's talk. So I walk in. You said a year and a half ago. Not so long ago. I thought it was longer. It, it might have uh, been longer. This was I, a live lounge. Back. We've we've interviewed Max on the show before, and so yeah, people yeah. know where that is. We actually his favorite place in town. I asked him if we could go into his show, his shop, and show us. So that was fun. We recorded there. Um, uh, but I, I, you know, I we ended up bumping into each other on a night where we both played at the speaker box, and I see that you play out frequently at places I didn't even know of yet. Um, and I think you do it under several names. So we mentioned Lips Manly is your your seems to be your most uh, popular incarnation of of your band. Uh, that's that's my that's that's my thing. That's yeah. that's my story right. directly. Um, but I don't like to always just do that. I, I like to I like playing with everybody. For me, and it's one of the reasons I like staying on a uke. I like to need other people musically i like a band i like uh, the conversation that occurs i like the moments where i can go oh, fuck, take a 
over. Yeah, you yeah. know, somebody else take over for a bit. Mm. I, I need a minute to just recuperate what my next attack's going to be. So, yeah. and um, so I, I like playing. I played with Jenny and the Scallywags for a while, uh, for for most of it, I suppose. I, they, I guess they were together about six or so months before that, um, and then I joined. Um, I played with a band called Camp Krusty and the Sausage Fest okay. for a while. That Makes was sense. a fun gig. Uh, a guy named Dan, I, I, I duoed with him for a couple of years. Mm. Um, just whoever I was feeling the right vibe with and, and uh, where it seemed to match well and, and things were occurring that were exciting me. So, for example, I, I thought I saw you. I was on an escalator in one of the high-end, super luxurious malls, and I'm pretty sure I saw your face on something. Uh, and it, I, I want to yeah. guess it was the M Cortier and the it was, fancy it was place. At flamenco. Right. That was that was kind of fun to be up on that uh, elevator there. Right, cool. right. So that's. I mean, so those are. So on the one hand, you say lazy, not into it. But on the other hand, you end up in these places. So either you're dynamic and popular and it just falls in your doorstep or you're looking around. And I'm not asking you to divulge the trade secrets or if you have agents or all that stuff. But, you know, it's interesting because you seem to be like Mercury. You seem to flow into the streams that are good spots. I don't know what's going on, man. Yeah. I, you know... I, I I am lazy. I mean, but I'm not lazy on stage. <laughs> okay. I'm All just, right, Frank, we're yeah. just gonna agree. The world's yeah. lazy, so yeah. let's edit out the next twenty times. He yeah. says it. No, but but it's it's like I I won't I I, I skate. I'm a skater. I'm That's a bullshitter. Right. I'm a cloud of of whatever I am, and it, somehow it tends to infect the people that I do it for. And I don't know what I'm doing really. I just get up and I do it, and I, I'm not. I'm trying not to lie ever. Yeah, maybe that's the opposite of a bullshitter, Will. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm not trying to... No, but I do talk in circles, man. I'm sorry. No, no, no I'm not trying to say that either. But, you know, I, I'm not seeing a man in decay and in need of guidance or help here. I'm just saying it, it strikes me as the thing that I've called you out on here was I walked into the room and was somewhat mesmerized by the first thing I saw you play. Um, and since then I've seen you play frequently and I've seen the same thing as you do have a command and control on the stage that's interesting and maybe distinguishes itself in the Bangkok music scene. And so, um, you know, to be dismissive of it is okay. And I think it's probably healthy as an artist to go up on stage with that. But at the yeah. same time, it's, it's notable to me. And I, I put in, you know, if you're saying you're lazy, then I'm lazy plus, cause I, I put in a considerable amount of effort just to keep the craft going and Frank and show going on the guys practice quite a bit. Um, and so I'm not trying to compare notes, No, sure. but I offered it's, you know, maybe it's not how you say it is a little bit because yeah, it, it bit. is pretty, it, it's good for our community, right? Yeah. To have a, a presence that seems to draw people to it. And so when I see you out and that night, I was particularly happy because I didn't know you're playing and I thought, oh, good. His people will show up, like whoever they are, whatever band of merry men you have that follow you, or women, or, who, or <laughs> dogs and cats, or whatever follows you around. You know, and, and I'm not saying that um, pejoratively. You know, your your audience is my audience. I would assume we're in the same neighborhood. Yeah, I, I think we're all in kind of the same uh, web. Yeah, but it was it was I was happy that night, and so you know it it is producing results, and so you're playing out and about, and so it's just interesting. Um, you know, so however you characterize it, I'll probably characterize it slightly differently, but it's just. Uh, you know, you're part of the scene and the scene moves, but, uh, you know, you're not part of it. Well, I have I have a lot of respect for people that do put in the time. You know, I, yeah. I, I guess it's just part of my nature. Maybe it's maybe it's say fuck you to the world and just kind of be like, I can I can do this and I can still kind of be who I am at yeah. my core, which is kind of just a sleepy bear somehow. I just uh, yeah. but it, but it's the, but I'm talking about that when I'm singing I, in the way I'm singing it. I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm you'll hear it. In a bit, actually. Yeah, yeah. This so, song's kind of almost exactly like about that. Oh, good. So let's talk about that then. I, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, open mic efforts or other things are what they are. But sure, uh, if you're modeling in your head, like you know, I want to step back for a second here to frame this better. Frank and I had a period of time where we were playing. Um, Frank plays bass in Roman Anton, um, sings, plays piano, plays guitar. I mean, he plays everything, and 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 as does Shogo. But we have some pretty much predetermined spots and I play guitar, which is yep. not the greatest outcome, but it's where we're at. Oh, I heard you all <laughs> way <laughs> but, 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 you know, the, right. but the point is Frank and I were forced into a 
enforced we we, it occurred we didn't have a drummer for a little bit and we played out and so we both played guitars next to each other and ended up sitting and then ended up standing and and having a move and it was a really liberating moment for both both of us i think from both a songwriting point of view and a playing point of view um you know apart from the fact that we could have he could play five or six minute solos if i went off to the bathroom or got a beer or something or was doing that because he's a much better guitarist than i'm but it was fundamentally liberating in terms of getting up on stage with two guitars um and our own material right so you know covers are what covers are and we do them and we do covers that we like and hopefully they sound like our stuff and respect the original or not but sure yeah i think we have an ethos that says don't make fun of music when you're playing it play what you like you know honor the code if there's a code but um we play our stuff and so part of our conundrum is is keeping folks entertained with songs they've never heard before um yes where are you at in the spectrum so you have a a pocket full of originals and then you do a lot of covers i've seen you cover all sorts of stuff oh sure how do you set your shows up you know this is sort of the age i'm gonna take one moment here. yeah please please um this is sort of the age-old discussion i get into with lots of people in town Mm -hmm. um about this very argument oh no covers oh Oh, don't do covers. It's the death of it. It's the death of what you're going to do. Yeah. <clears throat> doing what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. This is exactly what the fuck I'm doing, <laughs> dude. It's it's not, it doesn't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, uh, I, maybe I've, I'm just kind of a, I don't, I don't dream beyond what I can exactly affect right the hell in front of me. Uh, if I get somewhere with it, it's going to happen if I played a cover, if I didn't play a cover. If the right person hears me at the right time, oh, yeah. that's that's the thing. It's a sea of, of people, all of us shouting mm-hmm. out our own sounds. And I'm, I'm, res- I'm not, is it hopeless? I don't think so, because I feel energized about everything I do when I'm on a stage, every minute of it, and I aim to do that. And if it's a cover, it's me saying it the way I mean to say it. Oh, yeah. And if it's my original... Hopefully, I've given it to you in a way that makes the, the ultimate payoff for me is when I've done a set mixed of both, and and I get to the end of a set and somebody comes and goes, who wrote that? And then it's like that's the win for me. If you yeah. could, if you if you could hear the other things I'm doing and notice things, and then hear when you didn't notice and want to know what it was, I've kind of spun you for the loop. I've, yeah. I've tricked you. I've magicked you. Well, uh, and I guess what you just said is is. Um what i saw the first night i saw you play so i think you're you're articulating what i saw which is i got that and so i mean it's so funny because i talk to frank all the time about this you know as we play bigger and bigger venues as we get filmed and i'm not saying we're in any competitive situation with you here but as as our music evolves and as the business evolves and as we do other things and as we film it and we do all this nonsense um i i always used to ask roger and frank this you know Hey guys, think about what you're gonna wear. Think about what you're gonna do. You know, th- think about these things, and and I could always tell they're like, shut up, you know. Just <laughs> we're gonna show up and play, right? Like, you know? <laughs> and Frank in particular, because he's not terribly worried about a thousand or ten thousand or two thousand people, or whatever. It just, and maybe he is, and I'm not trying to take the thrill away from him. And he's sure, he's no. he's much more of an original and much more unique than I am, but. There was this constant struggle not to define our brand or, you know, show who we are. And I'm wearing a jacket right now. So the whole thing may be nonsense. But, um, you know, it's it's sort of representing who you are. And, and, and you know, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to and you can come over and punch me in the face when I bring this one up. But, you know, I walked in and, I was, and you had a, the brown sweater vest on today. You have the blue. And I was like, how fucking awesome is this guy? Like, what, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Because we're in Bangkok. I'm like. You know, he could have just as easily had a Chong tank top on here and would have fit in in flip flops. Sure. And I thought, well, okay. And as I've sort of watched you in the room before, I was like, we're seeing Will here, right? So hearing you say this today, like you're playing for that minute, is 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 sort of a wake up call to me. Like you can put these things on the mic stand and you can have these beads that you've made into bracelets and wear them on your head like a crown and have your own set of clothing and you know god knows what else we have here right 
you know, does you do, you do know I wear blue and pink suits? <laughs> no, I understand. I've seen the posters. You know, you know, and, and, and you know that is what it is. And I'm not sure. being critical of either. And, and no, I'm not but, saying I mean, it's all part of it, isn't it? Somehow? Right, but it's not like I have a feeling the blue and pink suits are probably something that calls out to you in a way that. Maybe my T-shirt designs don't for me. Maybe mine are more calculated, and there was like a, a Cartesian coordinate system that I came up with that said this is not risky, or this is going to get you to that other goal. I just like your clothes, man. Like <laughs> That's that. like your answer, right? Coded. It's just, a, it's right. just a simple pleasure of mine. I don't know. Right, funky time. Right. I mean, there it is. I mean, so I think that really moves us to the point. I mean, that's there's originality, and so you know, I, I, I maybe a backwards way of. of telling you why I invite you here tonight, but it seems like you're an original deal here. And so to hear you say David Byrne is, is a role model of yours. I mean, I remember struggling with him because I loved his music so much and his, I loved his weirdness and, and stop making sense was possibly one of the greatest stage concoctions I've ever seen where he came out and played alone and then added a player and then another player and then more players came on and, you know, did the burning down the house, which was the big song at the time when it came down and, and, he was such a phenomenal showman and still is. And I saw him in Florida a couple of years ago when I was back and he had a show and I didn't know most of the songs, but it was still riveting. And I thought, whew, what a, what a talent, like what a super talent. And so it, it sort of makes me understand that influence in your life. Well, I've never actually seen him. Yeah, there you go. Right. I've seen I, I, I mean, I've seen him. Yeah. yeah. I've seen him. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that, 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 that weird, that that weird yeah. is what grabs me about him. Yeah, for sure. I would, and this is why I told you you could you could tell me somebody's coming to town. I'd be like, eh, it's three yeah. blocks away. I'm not going. But if you told me he was coming here, I'd go because yeah. now that I know what I know about him, to be able to see him live yeah. would be such a different experience. What I know of him, which is just this kind of god of weird. The gods of weird, I get stuff from. I don't yeah, know yeah. what it is. Bowie's one of them. He's a god of weird, man. For sure. I mean, look at him at Labyrinth. I think these movies he did when he was yeah. in the 80s. I saw him as this Santa Claus figure as a kid. You know, and he got into all his amazing stuff that everybody knows and the stuff that people sometimes walk away from. Yeah. And if you stay on the limb with him, it's like he takes you in deep dives. Yeah. You know? So I I have influences like that, but I'd say what what... What drew me to burn was just the level of cinematic weird that you, you'd see and you'd yeah. hear from them. Yeah. And it was so good. So know? good. Yeah. Yeah. And then he did like the, some of the albums just got so unbelievably remain in the light. I remember come, when that came out, I was like, what just happened to my understanding of what this guy's doing? It was just really spellbinding. I would love to see if he, if he comes. Let, in fact, you'll, you'll probably be better yeah, knowing that I am. So if he probably, comes, let me know. He'll I'll, probably I'll do a bike it. tour here. It's yeah. like crazy, right? Like yeah. he's going to... With instruments. Maybe. Yeah, you run into him. He's bike torn with a pin guitar. But, well, that's interesting. So, you know, um, um, uh, so you end up here. And so we're both here and it's... it's um, Bangkok, Thailand, it's the year of COVID. Uh, you know, you were playing quite frequently last year at this time. Posters up, I think probably one of the... Uh, uh, right up till probably November. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so um, are you pursuing this hard now or are you, you giving into the man or what's this, what it is? Uh, what's the man? Yeah. What is the man? I really don't even actually uh, know how to answer that. What, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, so, you know, did you come here to do X and you ended up doing Y and Y is better or Y is oh, different? Oh, no. Um, I came to Thailand out of hospitality school. Uh, I was going to do the hotel restaurant thing. That was mm. kind of, you know, I was, I was just a wackadoo. I, I, yeah. I would want to do this thing for this amount of time and that thing for that amount of time. And I just toss it out like a wet rag when, when you're done with that thing. And that's kind of what most of my life was up until this. Yeah. And with music, when I could get to the point where I uh, knew what I meant to say, mm. with what I was meaning to say. Uh, it, sorry, I'm sitting far away. That's all right. Um, it, it became uh, a, a moment when I went, ah, everything else so far has been, and I'm still not tired of it. And I guess that's the, the, the writing thing. I think I'm right on X. I think I was on Y and I was on Z, but yeah. I've now landed on X. Right. So there you go. So you gave up the man, right? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Right. If that's if that's what giving up the man is, man, let him go. Like let him go. I'm good in the room, man. I'm good. Just me in the room. It's fine. Uh, yeah. 
Well, and you know, you, we, we, you and I here, Frank, Shogo, we're here collectively for whatever reasons, but we witness the scene that comes and goes. You know, however long we've been here, there's been quite a few people in my life that have come and gone. Oh, it's very transient. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I, I'm hoping to stay as long as possible. I, I'm setting up roots. I have them. They're, they're getting older now. Uh, you know, I have my places that I belong to and I go to. And um, by belong to, I mean you know, clubs that I've joined or whatever. Uh, these are legal clubs and fine, but, you know, uh, <laughs> health clubs or tennis clubs or golf clubs or whatever. Um, you know, and some, I'm settled and I'm, I'm, I'm I'm wondering, you know, you you have um, other means of income other than playing music, uh, and and you do those to help. Um, you know, how how hard do you see yourself pursuing music uh, at the end of the day? Is it at is, the same rate um, pursuing it, which is know. as it's always been the number one lady for me. Uh, it, 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 like every job I have is, it, they basically know there's a oh shit handle, which is me having a show yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're on hold. And when yeah. I go into a job, I go, look, there's, there's, everything's fine. We're going to be fine. Yeah. Except when this occurs, that takes priority. And it's kind of a humble bumble for some people, but mostly I've been able to have that stipulation in any work I've done in day. Yeah. So it's always still first fiddle. Yeah. And if I get something with it, it takes precedence. It's funny because I see you at, um, I think I saw you a couple of weeks ago uh, at uh, Speaker Box and an and open mic night. Um, you know, and it, it, it's clear to me when you're in a room, you're part of the music group, you know, even if you're not playing. It, and it's so it's, you know, it starts to become a scene and there are maybe not owners of the scene, but influencers of the scene, right? And sure. so, you know, it's just as interesting to watch regardless of what your intention is as, as i gravitate around some of the same spots not all the same spots uh, i see the influence that it has and so you know a guy like charlie who we both know plays mm -hmm. um is so unassuming and just brings his guitar and hopes to play and yep. and just plays for he's hours a soldier. He's, a soldier, <laughs> right? he's a trenchman <laughs> it's awesome yeah. yeah so there is i mean i think we would call, we would agree that there is a um you know a group there are a group of folks who hold up sort of their end of the deal. And oh, in this town, for yeah. sure. And yeah. now you're be you are not becoming part of that. You're a part of that group, and so I, and happy to be so. Yeah. I, I I love it, man. I, yeah. I don't get bored of it. I just don't. I don't get yeah. bored of the people I meet doing it. Mm -hmm. I don't get bored bored of the sounds I get to make doing it. What I learn doing it, um, and what I can make people feel like doing it. Yeah. I I just love it. it it's it's always going to be my go-to. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, original songs, how, how long you've been writing songs? I guess I've been writing songs since roughly 2010, okay. 11 maybe. So when, when you were, um, I guess in the Virginia early days, uh, were you writing in your head? Were you, roughing stuff out none of us had iphones then or maybe you did at that nah, age but nah, you not, going not on my mind man yeah. not at the time no uh. i mean again music's always been in me and whatever i was a listener then i was i was not the doer then you know it, it's weird now in my life uh i i would listen to all the songs before now i hardly listen to shit i just want to make noise uh. uh personally i just want to do it so it's it's switched i, I you know i picked up everything then and it was in me in that sense that I appreciated every good thing I was hearing. Um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, it wasn't the performance then. Yeah. I think I would wonder if I asked Frank this, I don't think I asked him this, but he, he seems to write and listen in the same amounts. Like I, I tend to stop listening to stuff when I'm in a writing phase. Yeah. But Frank just seems to be an open conduit for music in and out. <laughs> no, you know, but that's I, I, I envy that too because I can't I'm I'm const and my problem is I'm constantly in a writing state that's unfinished. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, we we've done better. We're, we're right now we're learning songs and we're doing other things and we're working on the podcast, but we had a period of time where we wrote a lot, a lot, a lot of music over two, three year period. Yeah. And my music catalog got completely disorganized on what, however you keep it now. It used to be CDs, it moved online, and then I had 5,000 CDs, and so you couldn't put them all easily, and then you need to cloud. And I remember my first six months of iCloud storage were $5,000. I said, this is absurd. I said, you know, what type of scam is this? And so 
I've really abandoned maintaining a library of music. And so it's searching on YouTube for the song that I want to listen to, which is somewhat infuriating because I don't feel like I own it. I'm not even yeah, sure. It's different now, isn't it? It's, I, it was, it was, it was, an, it was not only an emotional investment, it was a financial investment in something you wanted to have. Right. The commerciality <laughs> of music, it was much better before. Yeah. It was much more um, nostalgic before. I guess. And so, I mean, during that period, and so what, three, four years ago, Frank, we just were writing, you know, two songs a week, so some we'd forget and not do, but um, I can honestly mark that time period down, if I could remember when it was, is the day I lost control of my catalog, the thing I listened to. And so sure. songs that I had, and, you know, I have a huge history with my father in classical music and listening, and then when, when he passed away, sort of getting in order so I could have a collective memory of what he taught me and showed me. I've, I have that, and I have that on a four or five gig memory you know and it's impossible to find and i i try to look for songs and you can't find the one and yeah so sure it's really an interesting dynamic for me and and you know i have lost my ability to control my own catalog of music is my historical catalog and i think there's going to be a certain liberty in in growing up with music today so you don't have to do that because no one thinks in that antiquated sort of uh have to have it here's the box or file of things as opposed to I can go, I know it's always out there. The trust in the, <laughs> the web to provide it for you yeah. is really foreign to me. And I think it's, um, it's destabilizing how I approach songwriting as well. I mean, I really have these moments when I fall out of writing for whatever reason for a period of time. And I, I naturally, the, the, I think it's zero sum. So the writing goes down and the music listening goes up, but they both equal hundred percent. Right. And when the listening goes up and I'm looking for stuff, I'm finding I'm getting very frustrated. Like, this doesn't sound like a good version. Or, what is this? Like, I don't remember this one. Sure. You know, and so I'm still in a bit of musical limbo as we do this new dance we're doing with historical stuff. I don't, um, you know, it's, it's very um, different for people who are growing up now. I, I, <laughs> that sounds so dumb to say, ah, they're kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to imagine what it's like for them because... When I would get uh, an album as a kid, a CD, or I had my parents' records, you know, I was in, it was tapes I did, and you make tapes, oh, yeah. and you have the one tapes you have, and that's all you really have are those sounds. Now you can just get a million things a minute, and growing up as sort of an ADD spaz, you know, <laughs> if I had I now say. then, I don't know what the hell I would be like now. It, I was confined to the space in which yeah. I could purchase music and the things that you have there are what you can hear or the radio and what they want you to hear. Yeah. So it's this unconfinement and this ability to go everywhere, but you can't figure out where to go. Yeah. I imagine it must be tough for people to get really into music now in yeah. the same way. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because I really see some of the limitations on my playing. And I think... Um, Shogun Frank and I recorded in the studio our, our Kingpin song, and right now we're trying to write the score to a long play video. It's 30 minutes, and we have an octopad right over there that I, I have a feeling will feature prominently because you can generate, you know, completely digitized sounds that are precisely what this sort of Trent Reznor style <laughs> soundtrack yeah, sure. is going to require. And I'm not just saying I'm copying him or. I could just as easily say Bowie and Iggy it's a new element, Berlin, man. right? But it's a new toy, and I want to do that. And I look at guys that I appreciate, like Tom York, and I look at how he's incorporated a lot of these things into his DJing or his music, um, you know. And it's, so it really is a different time now. I, I think. Uh, yeah. Again, getting back to you on a ukulele that's plugged in with the vocoder on your vocals, and I thought, okay, same thing. I, I you know, I, I just get, I get tired of my own shtick after a while and yeah. I, I feel i feel the need to to shed a layer or 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 dive into a new layer sometimes just yeah. to to mix it up you know i um this year's been weird um the thing i did this year was go into video games yeah. I, I i'm a gamer yeah. i'm a i'm a near 24-hour gamer if you don't inter if you were to just leave me alone i'd just be a 24-hour <laughs> gamer people stop me i i have uh, Lucky yeah. I'm married. I have someone to stop me. When I was a kid, my mother would stop me. So what are the games that you play? Oh, so CRPGs, you know, uh, games that would be pen and paper, Dungeons and Dragons shit, but in computers. I love those. 
Um, so name some of them. All if, right. I so know. I mean, I would have spent thousands of hours on Skyrim. That's that, you know the, the hardcore gamers would be like, that's fucking terrible. Why'd you mention that? Um, Pillars of Eternity. Huh. Uh, Baldur's Gate. Never heard any uh, of these. Have you heard of these, Frank? Um, Shogo? Shogo's Japanese, so... He, you know some of those, yeah. All the Final Fantasies. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Every Final Fantasy. Even the ones that never hit the U.S., the Japanese ones. Uh, I think it was 4, 5, and 6. When it came, 7 came back to the U.S., I went back and played the, the 8-bits or the 16-bit versions of those, man. I love it. Oh, I love geez. it. I love, I love it. I don't even know any of these. Well, and so the game that I got, and I love... I love survival games too. So, are these on a computer? Yeah, computer. with a headset, and you're talking to people. So that's what I'm getting into. So I was I was okay. starting this new game called Rust, <laughs> um, and I'm like COVID, perfect. Like for me, sorry, perfect. Sit at home all day, don't all have right, to go right, out. Right, Probably right. don't have to work for a bit. I'm down. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, like yeah. It, I'm gonna take the financial hit. It sucks, but uh, yeah. I can I can badger down and just be in a cave, man. Uh, Let's right. do it. Um, my wife had more trouble with that. She was like, I got to get out of here. I understood. Yeah. Um, but so I, I was fine. And I was getting into these games. Um, Rust is one. And it's this game where you wake up on a beach naked with a <laughs> rock and a torch. And you have to try and live as long as you can. <laughs> Just And everybody's killing you, dude. Everybody's killing you. I think I want to kill you right now. I know. But I would be in there and I suck at this game. I suck. I'm terrible. I die. I just die all the time. But I want to be in there because people are talking. And when the character talks, you can see their mouth moving, and you're like, oh, "This is crazy." And I tried to be good. I even brought my my music producer for my. You last mean you tried to be better at the game, or yeah, you tried yeah. to be a good Rust I, person? Well, both. You, you try different approaches, but people kill you either way. Okay. You be nice, you can be bad. You're just gonna die unless you kill them first. So the world of Rust is one of mayhem. Well, it is, and it's sort of this. What I love about it is this microcosm of how uh, shitty people can be, right. and they're absolute worst. And I like somehow swimming in that ocean of shit, right. and it's it's uplifting to me. I, I don't know why. It just it's is. so not you, though. I know, but I, I and I like going in there and just doing this. And is I, this fantasy stuff then? Like I want to no, be the bad much, guy. No, some some people are really into the role play, but <laughs> I kind of do a little of both. But mm. what I started doing was I was just dying a lot, and I'm like. Okay. Look, just don't kill me. Just kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Don't kill me. Okay, don't kill me. I'm going to play you the song. And they go, wait, what are you doing? 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 Wait, so you're combining two mediums here. So someone's yes. pointing at you on a computer, but you're holding your banjo and playing into your mic. In the mic. room, into a mic, and I do him a song. And he's like, all right, all right, bro. All right, bro. All right. I'm going to leave you and alive. And he's like, here's some cloth. And I'm like, oh, shit, I, he didn't kill me. <laughs> So I started doing that on my own a bit more, and I started realizing I could literally just do a gig in here. I'm, I've got no gigs going on. I'm doing COVID gigs for the rest. And I even brought the band in a couple of times. <laughs> to play. To play in my living room. We And we would go to the, there's a spot where people recycle shit they gather you know, to get. <laughs> on the you know, island. I mean. On Rust Island? On Rust Island. Nice. And you're, it's okay. the one place where people can't kill you. So I'm like, that's it. We're camping there. People come here a lot. You are getting right oh, here. Oh, so it's like a safe zone. It's a one safe zone in this one town, and people come there quite often for just whatever. And uh, so we camp there, and we'd be playing, and they'd be playing with me, and people were like, whoa. Now, here's here's where I, I stopped. I got lazy. My thing is, like, I got to make this in a thing that actually happens. I got a paid gig Uh-oh. in Rust. Uh-oh. A dude paid me through PayPal to play in his hotel in Rust. And I'm like, I just got a paid music gig in Rust. I, I'm done. I'm done. I don't, I, there's nowhere else to go with me. I'm, I'm kind of done. It's like I've, I've gotten to where I needed to get. I'm good. So I did this show. And the dude, God bless him, he was trying hard. We were doing it in the safe zone. He's like, no, come to my hotel. I'm like, bro, we're going to die. People are just going to hear that and be like, you're having too good of a time. We'll kill you. And uh, he was running around while we were playing with a spear, just trying to keep all the natives off him. It was hilarious. So, natives yeah. jesus is this i don't know is this some alt-right is this some it, QAnon? Product? it's not but i'm telling right. you man you just see the weirdest slice of, of mankind so now in that game. god i want to like do a shout out to homeboy for having you like paying a gig yeah, to you. yeah no, no exactly i was like that's just so which band goal. played with you lips manly nice yeah it was good and we did it quite acoustically in my living room uh Ludo's on a on a cajon kit with a. Uh, so Ludo's cajon. a person. Not yeah, a... sorry, Ludo is uh, is my drummer. Okay. Pong is my guitarist. Shout out to Ludo and Pong. Absolutely, Here we go. absolutely, big shout out. Um, they're my boys. Right. So he's got a um, an inverted pedal on the cajon kit. He sits uh-huh. on the cajon 
uh-huh. hits his pedal and it hits backwards and he's got a little splash, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just enough for the living room. The, the key of his kit is more the brushwork. Right, right. And in a room like the one I'm in, which is just cement and tile mostly, <laughs> the brush picks up quite quite good. So we got a good room sound. I was I was impressed doing whoa. Um, Did you sound check in Rust Island? Not really. I mean, it was good enough. I, you have to. There's a little bit to do with the mic levels, but I'm not skilled in it, man. I'm, you know. I think we need to pause here because Frank and Shogun and I are a little confused because Frank and Shogun and I are listening to this as we record. So, um, are there hundreds of people now trying to kill you or sitting with you by the campfire as this is happening? If um, you could set the stage, ten tens at any time. Okay. So you know, let's say that you're in a server on Rust, and there's probably total about two hundred and fifty to four hundred people. Okay. Now they could be anywhere on that island, right? Right. And they right, tend right. to be running raids on other players with like <laughs> other big castles and shit. Yeah. You know, I'm a I'm I'm a nobody. Right. And you I don't even I'm, have a piece of cloth. No, I'm naked. I, I get up and I'm like, time for a show, and I run naked <laughs> to the town and I stand naked and tell people clothe me. Are you a physical yeah. image that's in the show playing? Yes, you'll see my avatar, not me. You'll okay. see. And you I, don't see yes, me. You see. Yes. So and you see so, my avatar, and I'm standing there. It says <laughs> lips manly above my head. And and I'll who is your avatar if I can ask or he's what a, he's a black dude just a guy with a beard just okay a random guy okay you know, everybody's sort of just you can't pick who you want to be that's another reason I love this game it could be some real dickwad you know uh-huh. just screaming racist shit and yeah. he's a black guy or an Asian lady yeah and it's like this is just this world is so that's weird. that R I P thing with, yeah yeah okay yeah, so yeah. Jeff Bridges was a hot model or something like that right yeah okay. I don't know it's okay just, right okay it's, so it's very democratic so I'm, I apologize yeah. for interrupting but I sure. think we were not since we haven't played the game before when you said you're running naked I thought wow do you actually have like a thing of your body no, running no, naked no, 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 no. so you're you're uh, uh, an African American man <laughs> running on Rust Island is he yes. clothed uh, when you get clothes right so did he it? have clothes on when he performed. Mm, uh, 50-50. I'm not watching myself who I am him, so I don't quite know sometimes. But you said someone gave you a piece of cloth. Yeah, so, so like if you play and somebody's liking it, you're like, all right, give me, anybody got stuff? I'll take a gun even, just give me a gun, like whatever, just whatever you got, and they'll throw you just random stuff. And if you stand by the recycling machine, sometimes people toss off stuff that I they see. want to change. And nice. You and just you just rat a set of clothes. And so, so we can round out what in my life now is the first I don't even know what to call it. It's a gig online and a video know. game that you got paid for, right? It's new worlds for me. I love right. it. Yeah. So we haven't had one of those. Yeah. So you beat us to that. Bucket list boy. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, yeah. <laughs> what, whatever we call it. <laughs> and so you, did you have the gun covering your, your private parts no, when so you were playing? this game can, I guess there's censored versions, but it's weirdly just wieners and you know, that just flying. So your naked doppelganger was playing. Yes. And how about Ludo, your drummer, was he no, naked? No, so that's the thing. Um, the hard thing to do, and this is this is where I I wish they could just have the technology, mm. we could have a mm. better technology, mm. to do separate characters. The, the latency right. is just tough. You know? So it sounds like you actually were sort of breaking the rules by having third parties on your end of the mic. Exactly. So mm. I'm, I'm in there with me in the room. He's so a bad rust player. Is. I am a bad rust up. player. And, I, and trust me, I died a lot. So I paid, I paid my price. But the cool thing is you can go to Russian servers, you can go to Australian servers, you can go to English servers, French so, servers. And you know they respond to you differently, and it's fun to it's fun to hear when they're like, "Yeah, bro, you're dull, you're dull. It's just shit. Just shut up. So right. I don't want to hear you." And the other ones who are like, "Whoa!" And it's uh, fun to go between. You know? So I have a fairly archaic understanding of what a server is, but it used to be a thing that was in my office building, and now I guess the Rust world is wherever it's created, and so. A version of Rust could be in Moscow, and exactly. they would invite you in. Yes, is Rust Island different there, or is there um, a template? There's variation. They they have a master template of the mm. island and the rules and the mechanics, and you can mod that. Mm. You never heard of a modify? Mod? This is, yeah, yeah, you okay. can modify the nice. coding to your okay. delight, but it won't be an official <laughs> server then. So I like the official servers because most people yeah. who play on modded servers, the rest go. You you just shit at the game. Like right. just stay there. So I guess I struggle with this part of what we've just described now is, is, is there any history of your live show recorded somewhere? A bit. I didn't quite get, I started, um, the, the show started suffering because I was trying to get all that right. right and right, I right. realized, don't, just stop trying, stop trying to get the best moment because when I was trying to get the best moments, you got killed. I No, I <laughs> would just be, it was not, I wasn't feeling that. I see. It was like, I was contriving it. And 
I much prefer what it just does for me. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's your whole motto today, yeah. right? Yeah. I think if we had to, if we had to entitle each of these podcasts, it would be, uh, you know, doing it my way or something, Frank yeah. Sinatra style for you, right? I'll take that. Sure. Yeah. So, okay. Well, that was a good. That was a good trip into a world I've never heard about. You know, and, and this, the stunning part of this is, I, as the more I start to understand this, is you know, Facebook or other social media outlets do keep tabs of things. And I imagine Google and the, the big boys keep tabs of your searches. And so there's probably a lot of memory out there. But it's interesting to think like that show is now gone. <laughs> like, yes, but I like that. Right. I'm sure that's, you do. That's part of me that, that um, people get frustrated with. I like that it's gone in the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, last night, so we played a gig that was a birthday party, um, part, partly. And um, we played our, 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 we don't have a standard set. We have about 100 songs that are ours. And that, so we'll pick out on any given night 20 of our songs. And sure. Throw in a couple covers. Um, but we played the first hour. And I think I said to Shogo, let's play quiet because there's some kids in the room and it's a party and I don't want to blow their ears out. Sure. Um, and, and I had this moment of awareness as we'd never really tried to play one of our more popular songs, or at least popular to us, nothing to it, quietly. And last night, we played it pretty quiet, right, Frank? I mean, it was half volume. And I remember resting the palm of my right hand on my strings to keep the volume down even further on the solo part. Um, and it really was a, a, an awakening similar to when we played solo, you know, that when we play two guitars in that song which is even weirder but it was you know the the on stage sort of dynamic of the same songs over time is something that i'm placing a lot of faith in <laughs> to sustain me that the the the, uh, the book will remain current as we evolve and change it and play it and so we talked about this earlier i mentioned this from time to time i my part of my superheroes were hall and oats growing up oh yeah um, and i've watched them evolve the, some of their hits over time and then i've watched them evolve some back to the beginning right like the way it was played when they first started it um and and i always wonder you know i even read paul mccartney last week because he has a new album coming out when he talked about sort of getting halfway through eleanor rigby and sort of oh i'm on stage singing eleanor rigby sure you know I, i'm there, there are times like that especially for him i imagine there's many because he's playing so often and for so long um but at the same time, you know, last night I've we played that song what Frank a thousand times, two thousand times, I don't know, five thousand times, live, um, and I was very present. And I don't know how many minutes or seconds or fractions of my day where I'm present, you know. And so that was a, a very good moment, but a very surprising moment is all it took was just that little tweak, and to I was, make it more interesting. To yeah, you again. very back into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it sounds like this. This, I mean, you were in rust playing live right but but it got me interested again right I mean, that, that's what it was it was this it was this new complete field of new permutations that can change what i'm doing right and i it was such a dumbly liberating scary experience you don't know what anybody's going to say right they're going to make you feel like trash and they're, they're going to try and kill you either way if you leave just, the camp or they're not even going <laughs> to listen to a, a second of what you do to kill you and it's just I like that um, that chance. Unpredictability, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I sense that you're perfectly comfortable up on a stage where there's a lot of commotion about, you know, music stands falling over and the piano coming off the stand and the drummer throwing a stick and you're like, yeah, yeah. let's go, come on, keep going. Yeah, it's <laughs> just, you know, everybody's everybody's passionate in their own weird damn way about yeah. things. And I watch people do things, I'm like, it's fucking crazy, man. But at the same time, I watch what it gets them to yeah, yeah. doing it. And no argument, man. Yeah. Whatever gets you to where you need to be, do it. Just yeah. do it. Let, let's, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, you, you're making me think about some other things. So I, I think we've covered a lot of what I wanted to cover. Um, I'm not sure if you have a website or if you have stuff that you want to <laughs> yell out once. Yeah, I've Is, got a, well, here, my shit's in shambles right now, dude. i got a website with like a, a <laughs> URL I didn't pay for for like the past three years. Yeah. All I'd have to do is run a credit card, but I'm lazy. Okay. Um, I've got a, a page that got hacked. You want to ho holler uh, a name out? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah. You can check out Lips Manly on my, uh, on my. Uh, L-I-P-S? <laughs> L-I-P-S. M-A-N-L-Y. M-A-N-L-Y. 
All right, so um, www.lipsmanly.com. You could, if it's still up, it might be down. I got to okay. just pay the bill. You know, uh, the other one is uh, you could check out my Facebook page for my band, but it got hacked, so it's still there. And right. It, but I don't have control over it, so check that out. Hold um, on. What's e Lips Manly? Yeah, Lips Manly. Check me out on uh, Spotify. I'm there. Okay. Got a couple albums. Lips there. Manly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll do that for sure. But no, I'm not. We're not done yet, and we do have the performance piece, and then we're going to head out. But I wanted to um, talk a little bit about uh, your Thai exploits, like what you know. What's <clears throat> so? We just came out of COVID, and it was um, a remarkably short time period comparatively. And you're in my office now. We're not wearing masks, and I'm pretty sure we're complying with the general uh, uh, protections that have been put in place. Sure. Uh, this morning, I played tennis with folks um in, in outside but um last night i played live and and all of those were sanctioned and allowed here we've we've managed well um so the covid thailand is a different scenario but you know what's your what's your take on being here and uh, do you like it or i mean you know i i kind of figured out um what's the right thing for me here mm -hmm. I, I figured out um people here better i figured out how to just <clears throat> swim here better yeah. i don't know I, you know i was a teen and and uh, in college in the u.s i guess that's the, the part where you start really thinking about what things mean nothing was making much sense to me over there yeah. nothing nothing i was seeing on tv nothing i was <clears throat> hearing people talk about nothing i was um seeing from politics at that time were mm. making me go hey I, I i buy into this i'm part of this it's just never been my my cup of tea man so when i came here that the alienness of thailand to what i grew up in the difference the 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 things that drive um people in the u.s crazy don't hear the things that we think or nothing drive them crazy what the hell is this now uh, what it, it was a new video game man. that's exactly what it was a new video game it uh, was a new thing that i could experience and understand and get to the next level in you know uh, learn the language learn the people learn learn how to be better in their in their unique perspective of the world learn how to absorb some of their unique perspective so I enjoyed the, the process of acclimating to being here. Yeah. Not in the sense of becoming sort of diving into sort of where the expats can get comfortable, but rather the opposite. Going going where we're not comfortable, going where I'm not comfortable, meeting people and, and engaging in, with them in ways I'm not comfortable in and yeah. figuring out how to make it comfortable. Yeah. yeah. So what, I mean, you know, okay, so let's put a name to those things that are different is this dumb exercise, and I don't want to do it because it, it usually just sounds absurd uh when groups of expats get together and try and say hey, yeah. how, how awesome they are but yeah, 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 yeah. you know like i just think you know the, the something that really infuriates me in bangkok as a car owner and driver are <laughs> motorcycle taxis right i mean and it, it yeah. if you drive you have to pay attention you won't like me then <laughs> <laughs> well right so you have your own motorcycle i saw yeah, you yeah. pulled up here and yeah. and and frank does too and frank's now turned mercenary right so oh, he went you, from you got it you, you, you can't <laughs> You gotta have the stare, right? You gotta look at a car driver like you and make you fear me. It's and, crazy. Yeah. I mean, this morning yeah. it was. I get up early to play tennis, and and it was me and motorcycle dude, and it was this game of chicken, and I was like, I'm gonna lose. I, it, 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 you know, it's uh, it's uh, different. I, you, you, you crash. Uh, you crash somewhere, and you learn. You learn in the deepest darkness part of your bowel. Uh, yeah. Don't crash again. Don't ever. Crash and you again. you figure out. Um, admittedly, it's not a it's not a safe thing. You know? I think it's such a metaphor for the the fight you can have here if you resist it, because just time and time again, um, as people come and visit and get in the car and we're driving, they're like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Well, you pull out. You know, you pull out and go." Yeah, I said, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, but you didn't do, you know, it's like, yeah, well, all right. There's sort of a flow. You have it to is, watch is. the you, flow. You, you got to find your moment. It's <laughs> not, if you, if you, this is what I hate is when the worst part of my day is when you're <laughs> okay, on the back so I say like soy 16 or one of the real deep back soys and two old ladies who have clearly spent most of their, you know, um, early earnings in life on this car. It's been blessed. They've done everything. Right, 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 right. It's a house. All right. They won't come within a foot of the other car and they both have less than a foot to deal with. And they just stop and go, 
the, 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 the town is full of those drivers, but there's also this, and you'll get around when you're like that. Yeah. You'll get where you need to be if you don't be one of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's interesting. I, I still don't know. I mean, I, I've, I've seen some extraordinary feats of driving skill here that are just mind boggling to me yeah. because it's based on a, a shared trust. It is. <laughs> it, just... is it is interesting. And then that's, <laughs> I guess that's part of what's so um, magical about this place. When you come from a place where it's like you're, you're 80 feet away from the next car. And if they don't wait for that, they go out a second before the light or a second late, they're going to get flagged down. Right. I mean, here the, the cop drivers, what are you doing? Go, what are you doing? Yeah, go, turn go, left go, on go, right. Go. It's not actually, but, Everybody's doing it. Go. Yeah. Well, it is interesting. And then, so I guess, I mean, that's, that's, yeah. I mean, I don't want to belabor these points and put lists together. I don't think that's the purpose for the switch attack and questions, but it, it seems to me like your stage personality fits in very well with um, the, the sort of flow of Thai society. Yeah. I mean, that, I guess that's part of it. I, <laughs> I mean, I, it, my resonation here somehow right. doesn't break wind, so right, to speak. Right, right. It doesn't break a, a philosophical fart. It's right. just there. Yeah. And, and I'm okay with that. It seems like this is where I'm, I'm going to be okay. Yeah, I have to find a better way to manage my sort of outbursts and anger in terms of just uh, <clears throat> uh, getting through the average day because... <laughs> Just the, sh the the look of bewilderment on people's faces when I leave my calls. Like, what's up? What? Calm down, dude. Yeah, you know, there's that expression like, oh, well, I, it's I've just had plenty uh, of moments. Uh, yeah. But they're so unmerited. They're so just nonsense. I know. When you think back on them, and you know, any outburst I've had in this country in the past 10 years has been my own, yeah. my own idiocy. It's yeah. just always contributing to that. Well, what, um, let's, let's maybe move closer to the end of this, but what, what, what are your, you know, what type of, um, inputs do you have from the homeland or do you not, or what type of news and music sources do you go to or do you not? And, you know, what's the reliable things for you that, that you look at or, you know, if you tell me you only watch East on TV, then I'll say, okay, you, you've lost your mind. No, but, no, no, no. I mean, you mean in terms of integration here? You no, know, I don't know. So I could say I get up every morning and listen to CNN, you know, just as an example, not oh, true or false, but mean. like, do you have like a 24 seven or, you, you know, no. you always dial in or you do Politico or you do, you know, cause we just were talking about business. Oh, okay. Um, that's right. Um, so I'm in Thailand and we're, we're talking about, uh, Thai stuff and, and getting along and, and doing our thing. So, um, we'll, we'll cut that last question out. Um, <clears throat> So do you, are you uh, traveling much in Thailand? Are you going out and about or what? Well, your... so at the, at the start of COVID, it was just system shock around right, the world, right. right? And then everybody in Thailand was kind of like, hey, we're doing the thing. We're, you know, public health, we're doing it. Oh, yeah. That's right. Um, and, uh, and I'm sitting here watching. I'm like, yeah, this, somehow we're kind of doing okay here. And then when it was quite clear that Thailand was not, terribly infiltrated by mm -hmm. it at the time. Mm -hmm. um, Air Asia started running this, um, oh Christ, somebody fly deal. Mm -hmm. And it was a flight buffet. All you want to fly <clears throat> from like mid-April until no end of November, any flight in town with two weeks notice, total price 3,000 bucks. Somebody freaking fly now. Wow. And my wife's like, yep, I'll take it. I'll take it. You're not doing music this year, right? Yep, you're not. Let's go. And she set up this whirlwind, crazy, let's visit every town we've never been to thing this year. Nice. Yeah. So I, I have to hand it to my wife. She's amazing with, with these IDs. Her and her and her sister connive and find the best deals in town. So, so let's rattle some off because that's of interest to me. So um, We went to Ko Yao Yai, Ko Yao Noi. We went to Kaolak. We went to Chiang Mai. We went to uh, Trang huh. and just... Uh, did whatever was there to do. No, no real agenda. We just kind of went and thought we'll dress nice and stay in a hotel and just be in the hotel. And then also maybe walk on the beach occasionally and eat food. That was it. So you, this started in May or was it? I think we started traveling in uh, June. Okay, yeah, cool. Maybe July. Nice. Yeah, it was good. Huh, so any, wow, I didn't know that moments. Um, nah, not, not, on a sense of, um, Throng was interesting. 
you know, I've been to Throng before, but when you get to Throng, Throng itself is not always the focus. It's more like there's these great islands out of Throng, or there's it's near Krabi, so you can go to Krabi. But the town of Throng itself is very humble and simple mm. and a nice flavor. You know, there's a heavily Chinese population there, right. Chinese influence dim sum like southern thai yeah, yeah. dim sum fusion so we were we were digging the breakfasts and uh it was it was more a food thing man yeah. i'm trying to think now i was down that way um i was surprised at the significant chinese influence down that way uh, yeah it, it's it's really this uh, kind of an undercurrent throughout the south and you don't i guess when your mind goes to southern thailand the first thing in your mind isn't typically oh the, the chinese oh. influence there but it's an underlying current in all the cities in the south. I think in all cities. Here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. But I just mean it's it's somehow yeah. more apparent there when you when you when you stand on a street corner and you just kind of look around and say, like, "Wow, it's really kind of Chinese," um, and I love it. And the food was great. You know, they, they have the muyang, the, the the grilled pork. We were just mm -hmm. like, "Give us a lot of that." Uh, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So, what are you are you spicy food dude or is oh, that? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I. I crazy spicy. I, I love chilies, man. Uh, Shogo and I are not, right? So he we struggled even last night with the birthday party food. <laughs> we we actually had the Sri Ra wrong place, guys. We had the Sri Racher <laughs> burger at craft beer and he yeah, was yeah. incapacitated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and my we're mom's like, the same dude. My mom, she can't take a hint of spice. She can't yeah. deal. She just can't. Frank is pretty good with it, right? I think you're moderate to heavy, but you uh, know, it's it's an acquired when you see the level of, of enthusiasm ties have for chili it's an acquired you, you get on their level over time you can't just dive right in it's yeah. hard but you get there yeah and it's interesting when they say this is very hot it's never like i'm not eating it it's just very yeah. hot so i'm i'm always somewhat uh, impressed by their ability to deal with that that force and just sort of say okay we're just going to do this anyways because uh, I cannot, I mean, there's a point in time where I have to sort of back off and say, I got to switch dishes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and since it's usually always family style, that's okay, right? You can just pick a different dish. You know, but interesting. Okay, so you did, you did, I mean, that's, you rattled off six or seven cities. So were those separate flights under this? No, some of it was together, some mm. was separate. You know, she just kind of picked a couple of weekends that we were going to be free and we did that. I mean, uh, work, work at the time was, was not, um, you know, very stressful. They, uh, people yeah. were still in shock. You know, I, I don't know what it was like for other industries, but in the training industry, it was it was slow. You know, yeah. and we we did a thing uh, myself and my colleagues where we started moving things to virtual, and that's going very well now. But but um, you know, I had a lot of time to travel for for about four good months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I mean, so we have a band getaway time, and we did it last weekend down in Pattaya, and it was obviously notably um off its game you know it's just oh yeah uh and then a month earlier i went to wahin and, and played around a golf down there one of my favorite courses and it was um uh, notably thin in terms of people down there oh it's it's dead almost everywhere i mean yeah. it's it, it's um it's a shame but it's somehow a, a cleansing of of an old um approach and i look no way you cut it. The next two, three years in Thailand are going to be this way. And it's got to be, there's got to be a different approach and a more organic approach to how you travel, how you, how tourist destinations respond to who's traveling, you know? Yeah. So, well, well and we'll I, see. I guess you have a history in hospitality or at least some training. So I, I don't, and all I have is, is business travel. And, and I guess, I guess if I were honest, I've never, really set out for personal travel it's always been in the context of work and sure. so well, and, if you and get where you need to be why not well and it was very generous in terms of you know where i've lived and where i've gone for work so i have been good in that regard but i i am um, i sit and i try and figure out what the next couple of years and i don't know i just memory seems short and people seem to do what they're able to do is you know when the last bad thing dies down and yes. so i'm wondering will there be any awareness from this I hope there is because it was such a traumatic thing, it seems, just to a lot of my friends whose businesses have suffered greatly and yeah. are folks who have been fairly wiped out, I'm gathering. Oh, we, we <clears throat> you know, I, I don't I don't mean to talk without uh, gravity. I didn't, about, about this I didn't interpret it that way, but sure, sure. you said, you know, organic changes is a nice uh, sort of 
it suggests there's responders that do respond. I would hope. I, mean, I feel like I've, I was faced with uh, zero profitability, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the rest of my colleagues were, and we, we adapted. Uh, yeah. um, and I'm hoping this is not just a sad story for people, and rather yeah. they go, well, oh, Christ, things are, it's a different thing. It's, uh, uh, we just have to change gear and, and do yeah. something new and different. And and get it back in in, a, in an organic way, so like man up somehow and, yeah. and make it occur. I you know I say that again not without gravity. Some people know what they know, and I'm a lot younger than other people who are probably unable to really switch their gears at this yeah, point. Yeah, so. yeah, and you wonder what, what the next, next sure. second act is. But I'll, I'll give you a chance to wipe the foam off of yep, it, that it, that foamy it, beverage you have is not a it is not the, a. Uh, Okay, cappuccino. The oh cappuccino God. foam tends to collect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, good. Well, look, uh, anything you wanted to bring up today that we didn't cover? I mean, I've asked you for the Lips Manly uh, social media, and you didn't give a terribly impressive response. <laughs> yeah, on that. It's but, not terribly uh, impressive at the moment, you know, to be honest. Uh, again, it comes back to the, uh, I'm lazy on uh, that front. But no, look, I have, I have um, I'm, I'm in a sort of blues network with uh, Live Artists Asia, and, uh, you know, uh, shout outs to everybody who's helped me with what I do along my way. Um, you know, all the venues I've played at for sure. Um, John, uh, Ludo, Pong, guys in my band, Kitty Bronco, who I learned to do music with. I mean, Jenny, I played with her for years. It, it, it's, a, it's a shout out to every Charlie. I mean, I watch that guy and I, I, he does, he seemingly does what he does. But every time, I don't know if you ever listen to snippets of what he does. It's different every time. Oh, it's amazing. I listen he, every Wednesday over at Apotheca. And it's never the same thing, said Chua. I mean, he, it sort of is, but in, in a, he, he never is going to come at it with the same exact color palette. You know? It's the master so of the looper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, everybody that's got me where I am now, that's basically what it is. My family, my parents, of course. Okay. Well, good. Anything you wanted to ask me, or did we cover all the bases? Are you uh, been, uh, yeah, I don't even know what we're supposed to do in these scenarios. You, this is my first one of these uh, things okay. ever. So, you know, just. No, good. No, well, no. Well, look, I mean, so we're, we, as you can imagine, I have a script and I go off it, and it's three parts. And so I've, I've described you what those are, and we've agreed. Uh, or at least we've said you'd come today and you got the banjo ready. So Sweet. Uh, we can hit the pause button or we can set up, but I think you can stay in that chair. You can take the headphones off and you can play how you'd like from that chair. And we may set one or two more mics down to get some, some responsibility. I don't know if you're tuned <laughs> up or if, if... I, you know, like I said, this is, I don't do this. Um, Understood. I, I do this in, in rust. When oh, yeah. It's just me in front of a, a thing right. there. So this is, um, yeah, let me just make sure it's all. all right. Yeah, we're going to go grab some mics. So, um... All right. Yeah, let us grab one or two little Pause things. It is. This is our new tech. We just rejiggered some of our tools. We've got some new mics on the table. You can ignore those. But, Will, um, thanks for coming in today. We, we finished our interview session, and part two of the Roman Anton podcast is a performance. If you're up for it, you seem to. I definitely am. All right. Um, anything you want to tell us about this? So this is, uh, as I was telling you earlier, this kind of is all about that whole uh, vibe, I was telling you, the kind of non-committal uh, laziness. It's called um, Gravy Train. Right, and you mentioned that it should make me feel like it's a big bear. I, something like I suppose. Uh, I don't even know how we ended up on that, but yeah. No, this, um, and funnily enough, my dad uh, and his local jazz band in northern florida perform this um i guess Perfect. this particular song resonated with him especially this is your song this is my song yeah yeah and, and it's yeah, off it's my project called dreadful pleasures that was my first one dreadful pleasures is on spotify it should be yeah okay if yeah. not it's up there if you type in dreadful it's amazon or something uh will corbin dreadful pleasures uh, it would be under lips man lead lips man lead. Yeah, yeah. P S M A N L Y. two different words and will is going to play this song here uh and your father's still alive and oh yeah, yeah he's i don't know if he still plays it but he did a performance of okay. it they videotaped it so you, give, you can see that as well that might even have more hits than right. mine who knows right, whenever you're ready and when we can yeah sure this is a bit old timey. This one seemed to fit the vibe for a, again, a solo ukulele yeah, performance. Eight days a week are we slave away for the pennies and nickels and dimes we save. 
A blink of your eye and your foot's in the grave I'm not ashamed to say That it's champagne and oysters and pearls I crave If heaven sees fit to provide my way To open the skies as I beg and I pray To let the Benjamins reign Cause half of me wants to be crazy And half of me wants to be sane But all of me wants to be lazy And buy my ticket on the gravy train Everyone's trying to break me Everyone's calling my name The only one thing that can save me Is my ticket on the gravy train Oh, I be no tempest in a teapot When all the world's my stage I buy a mountain just to make it a molehill And rattle you out of that gilded cage But back when I called you my baby I could never put you to shame But now I'm flying high Got my head in the sky With my ticket on the gravy train In a teapot when all the world's my stage I buy a mountain just to make it a molehill And back you out of that gilded cage But back when I called you my baby I could never put you to shame But I'll be flying high Got my head in the sky With my ticket on the gravy train Bazoot you said I got my ticket on the gravy train Now what you said I got my ticket on the gravy train Yeah! <laughs> that was fantastic! <laughs> Alright! All right, man, I'm not giving Wimp Lips Manly any credit, so Will Corbin, uh, playing the ukulele gravy train, I really appreciate you coming and doing that today. Thank you man. for having awesome. me, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Shout out to Will Corbin. Check that out on Spotify if you're out there under Lips Manly, L-I-P-S space M-A-N-L-Y gravy train. Otherwise, uh, we'll get that out. You can check out uh, Roman Anton. Uh, podcast and you'll find that and other than that uh, appreciate you coming in let's go hit the road and find your right. shop and if the noodle shop closes which noodle shops do we'll figure it out on the fly i suppose thank as you, you do for coming thank in. you thank you for having me oh that was spectacular ah, thanks man. <laughs> was awesome. hey it's uh roman anton and will corbin we're in part three of the roman anton podcast we're at your pad thai your pad thai on rama four rama four we call uh, one of the main streets that run through the back part of Thailand. The Sukhumvit Soy 24 is right there. And so we're just a couple blocks away from the Roman Anton office. We're a couple blocks away from Queen Bee. We're a couple blocks away from Live Lounge. We're a couple blocks away from the headquarters for uh, Top Flight. We're a couple blocks away from our good friend Ken at Dynamic Studios. We're a couple blocks away from our good friend at the Speaker Box. And Will wanted to bring us here today for one of his favorite places in Bangkok to go. And the reason to go is for food. So we've got some awesome dishes here. We've got um, Pad Thai, we've got, and I already said this, so Will, let's jump in here and have some beers and some food, right? Sounds good, man, let's do it. All right. I just not had that down in the noodles. Yeah, not, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Like, I, I imagine they would have never expected me to show up with the camera. It's 
these are just, I think they're football. I tend to not ask them when it comes to balls. Uh, yeah, so. Frank, are you at this Yeah. You been here? Uh, this place, no, but uh, I'll go say it for I was, I'm here often for, I'm here often for, um, EQ, as you mentioned. EQ oh, right. students right around the corner. I've got many of practice here. And I've uh, been in this part of town for various reasons over the years. And this one place has been the place I've found. I love their particular set of contacts. This is the is a very particular Especially tacos. I'm like, oh no, no, I would never eat that. I have it this way with these three things. And this place tends to have exactly what I want to do. Oh, yeah. You got nuts. You got nuts. That's sugar. Now, I'm not a sugar guy. I tend to go without sugar. I tend to go with the vinegar. That's vinegar with chili. And then I'll see, of course, the, the homegrown uh, chili powder. Yeah, so this is sort of standard. You got a side car, right? Right. Do you, do you put chip pepper on your dishes when you eat them? Hmm? You put pepper, spice in your dishes? Uh, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. I do. No, I, I'm, I'm about to show you to the extent in which I pour spice on my so I love a big old heaping spice. Ah, that's a lot. I, I don't play around. I love the flavor. I love to leave a dish going, Jesus Christ. So you're going to start sweating while they do it? You know, I'm going to sweat, but I don't like the sugar. A lot of people care for the sugar. I'm not a big fan of adding the sweets because I find their broth already sweet with that Chinese spice. So I think it just needs savory elements to balance it. That was awful though, there. I'm not sure if I'm blocking that, but I'm taking it back to this. So let's go through. These are fresh made. You can see it. You can see it all over. And I feel like Gordon Ramsay would show up here and give it a five minute five. No Tender. Just tender. Beautiful meal. So have you ever lived in this kind of country? I have not. I have always lived around. Um, no, I lived in Loud Prowl for a while. There's some good joints up there, but yeah. nothing I continually write home about. Um, Fape, that's that's the exception. There's this really cool place out of the end of Loud Prowl, Loud Prowl 1, and they do near frozen beer, Japanese style, you know, uh, slush beer, yeah. as in Thai they call it, beer wound. Right, right. And they have a record player, and it's this cool joint. But they, it's few and far between I find joints that I go, wow, I just can't stay away from there. Yeah. And this is one that I always come back to. I don't know how to eat this stuff. I see a lot of double-handed action like you're doing. Yep, I'm learning. I'm still learning. Yeah. There's people who are master noodle eaters. I'm I'm always gonna have a spot on my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After a meal, sure, you right? can guarantee there will yeah, be a brown fucking spot on my shit. After Frank is Frank is a master. He's a noodle eater. So you're master noodle sure. yeah. What are you doing? Man? You gotta eat those noodles. He's running the show. That's the the tough spot of a biscuit. Yeah. And so we got beer and ice, right? We do. Ice and beer. Can't go wrong. It's a good beer. Cheers, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it. So do you guys cook at home a lot or do you go out to eat a lot? Or both? I'm, I'm, now that COVID has kind of set in, I've become much more budget conscious on food. Uh -huh. I tend to be the guy that goes, fuck it, let's spend on this meal and worry later. Um, but lately, I've been I've been hitting macro, uh, you know, as you do. Yeah, yeah. Getting my bulk uh, amounts of whatever and perfecting certain foods. I'm doing a lot of slow cooker ribs at home. Uh huh. I'm doing a lot of chilies at home. I'm doing those. I love the slow cooker. I love to I love to cook a thing to death and keep all that great flavor right in it with all the fat yeah, and all yeah. the juices. You know. Are you a cook? Was your family? My background um, earlier in life, I'd say, was cooking culinary arts. I, I pursued that for a while, but I'm like one of these cats who got voted off early from the Hell's Kitchen. Oh, because you were like throwing in hot dogs with your Yeah, I was just, I, you know, if you could have seen my station back when I was cooking, dude, I was a messy bastard. I was gross. No, but you'd look at me, you'd take one look at my uniform and be like, I don't want to eat his food. So I'm a spaz in a kitchen. I can't handle many orders, but I can handle my own food at home at my own pace, and I'll make great food. But, um, so I'm eating the pad thai here just to say I've tried it mm -hmm. off the communal dish, which is not cool. I'm not sure if I've even actually had an actual pad thai here. I've always stopped at their, um, at their noodles. Mm, those noodles taste good though, right? Mm. 
That's not disappointing either. So you put a lot of spice on this then? I would add spice to that because see, that's inherently sweet. Yeah, yeah. And as much as I do enjoy a nice sweet new Thai noodle because that's in essence one of the main flavors of Thai food, I would be balancing that. I'd be adding some more stuff. I'm not My sure. wife gets really pissed at home when she makes me a, a good food. I'm literally condimenting it always. I never stop Thai condiments. I love that they get it to exactly where they want it to be every time. You know. See, I like that. You know. What, yeah. You know what? I'm not sure if what the right way to do this is is if you if you have an end like that, like biting that off. Is that okay? I tend to bite because if I don't, it's gonna. Right. So you, you do that like that. It's a dance, man. Is that okay to bite it and let it fall back in? There's no right or wrong. Right. The right is not getting, but see, you're lucky. You wear black and brown. <laughs> I'm wearing like bright blue. <laughs> I can fuck mine up way easier. Right. Than you, yeah. it's, my, it's my fake rock and roll status. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So this is good. You know, mm. it's really good. I like one. I like the ice in the beer thing so it stays very cold, right? It took me a while to get on board, but I am now. So we got to sort of hide the labels here, but. Um, and so Franco gets to eat in a second here. Yeah, I feel bad for him. He's got to wait. The whole He's got his, his revised yeah. booties. But he'll he'll be enjoying it yeah. when we're already over. It. So, like, I like coming to these places uh, and coming out to. to not do writing, but to sort of recalibrate the writing. Yep. The coffee shop mystique has gone away for me now. Okay. Boy, it was so much of my high school and college was, you know, coffee shops were sort of safe havens. Sit there forever. I sort of lost that vibe. Now it's when I sit to eat and I sit in places in Bangkok. I may not come that often to the same place. Sure. But I tend to do a lot of writing at these places, both... Uh, Music and book stuff. I think what I like about this place most is it's not a place that people come to be seen at. I, you know, you talk about the coffee shop. Look at Starbucks or Obong Bang now. It's just an Instagram shot and a and a fake ass coffee. I'm I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't I don't buy it. It's okay. Oh, they yeah. do make good coffee, but I don't need to be there. I don't need to be seen there. I want to be here, and this is a place you don't want to be seen. This is the place. You come to, as you say, <laughs> so well, as we film it with right, right. cameras. But, right. but no, it's it's a place where you're at your most. You can be vulnerable. You can just yeah. sit and cry into a bowl of noodles yeah. and be fine. And nobody around here is ever going to think twice. Yeah. I like that you can disappear in this town. For sure. You, know, you can still disappear in this town, and it's not it's not weird. It's a normal phenomenon. Well, and I, my boy keeps dropping his phone, and I like the. Um, I like the uh, the informality of it all. Yeah, yeah, that's show, it. It's just plain good. Show up and whatever. Yeah, right. So yacht pad thai. Yacht. As far as I can tell, it's family owned. Yeah. I've, I've asked snippets of questions over the past, say, fifteen times I've been here, and it seems to be family owned and, and uh, operated very authentically for many years. You know, this this is the way I came home from work six 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 years. Yeah. Right down here. And turned left on Soy twenty four. Yeah, exactly. And so I ate at the Lebanese place right there. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But my house is right down the street, so I drove by this all the time. There used to be a military supply store right next door. Yeah, there's a couple here I think right? actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean you get good fatigues and stuff. Mm. Sorta of cool, right? I find Time, time market mechanics phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's such a strange thing. There's a soy in Yawarat entirely dedicated to metal chains. Right, for sure. Just literally nothing but a row of shops that sell chains. Yeah, yeah. And they're all right next to each other. They're all selling it at the exact same price, plus or minus a nuanced difference. Yeah, yeah. And they all thrive together or, or dive together. It's weird. There is a communality to the way that, that commercial things work here, isn't there? Sevens on every front corner. It's I don't know thing. if it's that different than in America. Remember, I remember in the East Village when I lived in New York, there was a light area. Yep. Right? You go by your house lights. Yeah. You know. you're, I guess it's partly because that part of town is known for that thing. And when 
you walk up to a place like this, I can walk up to any noodle shop owner and be like, where can I get this thing? They're going to give you this. Yeah, yeah Over yeah. there. Well, where's that? You know, where they have all that shit. Right. And that's part of, I suppose, the, the ability to, to stay relevant in a business. Like, they know to come here for this thing. We'll get them when they come. It is a different... I don't know. It's just interesting here because it's so reliable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're always there. They always sell uh, the yeah. same thing at the same price. And that's what that is. Same with this. Although I did tell you, I was worried about this place because sometimes they're closed. But yeah, right, it's, right. it's because there's such a, a simple operation. They are just like, nah. Right. We you need did, a break. And to clarify that, if anyone's listening, is you were worried we picked Sunday and you weren't sure if this Sunday, since it's a holiday, it, it was a holiday people. weekend. And I've been I've been past here a couple times, going, oh, I'm gonna get my noodles, boy. It's gonna be good. And they're like, boom, closed for three days for uh, observance of holiday. I'm like, ah. So here's my bonus question, though. Sure. Are Soy 22 wines right behind here? Yep. Did you ever go to El Diablo? Yeah, right there, the burrito joint there, yeah? Closed. Is it closed now? COVID. Really? Mm -hmm. That's a freaking shame, That's man. a loss, right? It was good. I hope it's still open. And I it was indie. The wrong thing. It was indie. It was good. I, haven't, I honestly haven't been there in ages, but... The kid who owned it was a real sweetheart, too. Mm. Yeah, I ate there about three or four times. Yeah, I, I'm really a impressed. Huge fan, good yeah. food. Good food. Yeah, sorry, bro. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, th hey, look. So great session today. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the song you played. It's uh, Gravy Train. Gravy Train. Gravy Train was the highlight today. Maybe this is the highlight of the Gravy you Train. You can't go wrong with a bowl of noodles. So we've got the owner over there. He's awesome, and we got some other folks here who look like family members. But yep. we're on Rama Four. We have uh, Yod. Yard Pad Thai. We're at the Yard Pad Thai restaurant and uh, digging some Pad Thai and some noodle dish and we got some pork. Can't and go Franco's wrong. behind the cameras. We got some beers now we're going to drink. Let's do uh, it. But well, hey, it was really a pleasure to get to know you a little better. You too, man. Thanks right, for thanks, having me thanks, on. Thanks. Appreciate it. One, two, three, quiet.